Hi, I'm Carol Wilson, editor at large for Light Reading, and I'm here with James Fieger, the vice president of network virtualization at CenturyLink. Welcome, James. Thanks, Carol. So, there's been a lot of discussion here already at the big communications event about the edge and how exciting things are at the edge and how important edge computing is going to become. Yeah. Let me start with a real simple question. Where is the edge of your network? <laughs> I think it's in flux. Uh, you know, as, as we build services that move closer to the customer, uh, the traditional provider edge locations that we have defined as the edge mm -hmm. are moving closer. Uh, as you create things like universal CPEs or SD-WAN type of devices and services, we're now putting the edge inside of the customer premise. Okay. So, so. The, but when you look at where you're going to need to put the edge of, for, for you to have compute power, to reduce latency and all those things we hear about, does that become the CO? Yeah. And, and is it become even closer than that? Yeah, I think so. The, the, the CO reconfigurations are uh, a huge opportunity for us. Mm -hmm. Obviously, performance characteristics, you know, general loss latency, uh, heavily distributed and disaggregated services uh, are very meaningful in the, in the world of, of data and data analytics. And so the CEOs are a prime target for that. And, and repurposing them from traditional wireframes and TDM services into mini data centers is, mm -hmm. is very attractive. Um, it's not, it's not just a flip of a switch. There, there are some things that you have to take into account. Right. So, um, for example, a lot of companies have thousands of buildings, thousands of CEOs. It probably doesn't make sense to deploy thousands of data centers immediately. You have to target those locations, make sense of what the data flows look like uh, before you go and plan these reconfigurations. What are the challenges to converting a CEO to a data center? Simple things that a lot of people don't think about. Uh, power. Okay. Redundancy, there's different characteristics re regarding redundancy. And a big one that I think several companies have run into uh, traditionally is simple thing like fire suppression. So mm -hmm. what kind of standards do you have inside of these buildings uh, from an equipment perspective mm -hmm. or from an, uh, from an extinguishing perspective around fire suppression? Well, so if it's a NEBS compliant building and has, what, minus 48 volts of power, do you have mm -hmm. to completely change all that? Well, NEBS servers are more expensive. Okay. NEBS, NEBS general purpose compute equipment is typically more expensive. Now, those are commercial things. You can work through the commercial challenges associated with, uh, with that, mm -hmm. but those are the things that we're having the conversations with our suppliers uh, around is, okay. is how commodity is commodity okay. and how carrier grade is carrier grade uh, and finding the balance that makes sense, but we're still meeting the regulations that we need and, and, and making sure we're within the, the compliance uh, required for the local codes. At some point, does it make more sense just to have like a little, um, like a pop-up kind of data center in the same property as the CO? Uh, or? You're, you're seeing a lot of those. So, okay. so um, there, are, there are many companies that are focused on building pods drop-in pods, trailer pods, you okay. know, not, not, not much different from the things you hear about the big, the big web, scale, web scale companies doing with, uh, with containers. Okay. So uh, if you have a, a massive CO, say you're in a major metropolitan area, and, and the risk of, of not having the right type of equipment inside of there uh, from a compliance perspective is too great, mm -hmm. then dropping something on the roof or dropping something in a container out on a parking lot is, is definitely uh, an attractive option. Okay, um, James, one final question, a little bit of change of topic. You just appeared on an open source panel here and we've talked a lot about open source in the past. Where do you see things changing around how um, large companies like Century, large carriers like Century Lake are using open source and the way it's impacting uh, how you adopt virtualization? Yeah, um, it's a great question. I think, I think the comfort with open source in the, in the telco community is, is getting much better. Uh, it's a matter of finding the expertise and finding the, the software developers that you have the confidence in that they know how to interpret the code mm -hmm. that they've, they've been using or okay. develop the code that we're going to use. And, and doing that with a high level of confidence that, that'll pass all of the you know, security and risk committee uh, audits, pass all the scaling requirements, pass the operational uh, characteristics, and then putting an operational support uh, team in place that can say, okay, well, you used to call this vendor, now you're calling your coworker okay. for the support. Is that a, a huge culture shift for you? For some, it's, okay. it's a culture shift. Um, as long as the is what I find, as long as people get the support that they need, they mm -hmm. become comfortable. Okay. Uh, it, it's getting over that first hurdle that says, "Well, I work with you every day, and you're the person I call to fix my problem." Mm -hmm. uh, building those relationships and, and changing the mindset. The other one is um, the investment it takes for open source. Okay. Open source is not free. That's a that's a misconception that a lot of folks have. Absolutely. Is, uh, if if you're contributing or if you're participating or you're trying to use open source. 
there's an investment to be made to make sure that it's going to do what you need, how it's going to do it, and, and make sure that it's going to pass again all of the, the security and uh, policy requirements. Okay, great. All right, thanks so much for being here today. Thanks, Carol. I really appreciate it. Thank you.